Okay, so we've got the, the jib at 50 degrees. We just have one brick right now. And we're going to have counterweight is six bricks. So here's the uh, exercise. What's the maximum load we can lift with the jib at 50 degrees, six brick counterweight? What's the maximum load? Well, so what's the, what's the, um, the torque of the tower? So we need to find the torque of the tower, which in a previous video we did, and that's weight times distance. We got 308.25 inch pounds of torque okay. for the tower. Now we go to our six bricks, which is weight times distance again, and that gets us 733.2 inch pounds of torque. And add them together, we get 1041.45 inch pounds of torque. So that is the total torque for this side of the crane which is the, the body and the counterweight. 1041, got it. Okay. So, next step, in order to find the maximum weight we can lift, first, this is our 1041 we already found, and we know the torque of the jib, which is 237.75 inch pounds of torque. That was from the last video. Correct. Now to find the torque of the load, keep in mind this is torque we're talking about, is still weight times distance. And we know the distance, we just need to find the torque and the weight. So luckily, we have a very simple way of finding the torque of the load, or well, at least the maximum torque. Well, first let's, let's go to uh, the next poster. Yep. So um, all our comp computations are very crude. So uh, engineers have something called the factor of safety, which, what does that mean? Well, if we had 100 inch pounds of torque on this side, and we wanted to be extra safe about what we're lifting, we would multiply the torque here uh, by 1.5, and that gets us how much counterweight or counter torque we should have. So if it's 100 here, we'd want to multiply by 1.5, which would mean this side would have to be 150. Good. And conversely, if we ha if we knew how much uh, counterweight we had, we would just divide by 1.5 to right. get the other side. Yeah, if we, had, if we had the total torque of the tower, which we do, and that is? 1041. 1041. So, well, let's see. And you can see that here. We have, if we knew what the torque of the load and jib was, we'd multiply by 1.5, and that'd get us our tower torque. But since we don't know that, we actually divide by 1.5, and those two cancel out. Good. We divide this side by 1.5, because you have to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. And we know the t torque of the tower, 1041, and we just divide it by 1.5. And we get? So that means our torque of the load equals 1041.45 over 1.5.